Hey guys, welcome to Xamarin University. This is a quick lightning lecture to put on display something that I just recently learned about thanks to the Merge Conflict podcast. In fact, you can see that right here up on my screen, uh, episode 85. They talk about multi-targeting. This is actually really amazing. It's something that's going to be making Xamarin development a lot easier. So I'm gonna actually walk you through today how to do a little bit of the multi-targeting and really show you what that means. Um, I've got here an example application. Uh, this is an application that we use with Xamarin University for some of our classes. It just displays some quotes on the screen. So that's what we're going to be doing here is just displaying the quotes on the screen. And it's a pretty simple Xamarin application. You can see I've got an iOS version, an Android version. And then there's this .NET standard library right here. So this .NET standard project is doing some things that are common across the Android and iOS uh, applications, obviously. So we've got that, that common stuff. Normal Xamarin application, normal to refactor our common code into some shared library. It used to be PCLs, now we use .NET standards. Well, okay, so if it's a .NET standard library, .NET standard project, then I have to put stuff in there that is part of the, the standard, right? It makes perfect sense. But I get to this point where I want to save the quotes. So right here we're in the save and, and I see that the file name is perfect for Android. In fact, this would work just fine on Android. However, it's just a little bit different on iOS. So I would love to be able to come in here and say something like if mono, all right, hold on, hold on Visual Studio, if mono Android, right? And then and elif say Xamarin iOS, then have something else and then we could end if. And then, so the something else actually, we just need to navigate into a subfolder for iOS. So we'd wanna do something like this, just add one more to that, that folder combine. I would just be adding one more nested structure here. So basically it's gonna navigate up from documents. So that's the up right there. And then back down into library. Okay, so then we're in the library subfolder. This is what I'd love to be able to do, but if this is .NET standard or heck, what if I actually have some iOS specific code in here? Maybe I'd want to put iOS specific code in here. Uh, if they were in a .NET standard project, then that's pretty much impossible. And I did tell you that, that this is a .NET standard project, but I lied just a little bit. You see, when I first created this project, I right clicked and, right -clicked and said, add new project. And then from there, I selected .NET standard class library. But then came in here and I edited the CS proj. And when it first was loaded up, instead of having target frameworks, I just had target framework. And in there I had .NET standard two. And that's what happens if you create a new .NET standard library. But well, I removed that. I removed that and I put target frameworks plural. Then I included mono Android and Xamarin iOS 10. Now these two targets actually are not built in. So even though MS Build has done some amazing things to actually make this target frameworks option right here work, not all targets are built in. But fortunately, there is this NuGet package, MS Build SDK Extras Targets. And that is thanks to Oren Novotny has created that. And actually here's his blog post on multi-targeting where he's the expert, he digs really far in. So definitely check that out. It's from uh, January 4th, 2017 when it was still in preview. Um, it's a little bit better now than when he wrote about it, a little bit more advanced, including thankfully, thanks to him, we actually have some of the, uh, some of the helpers. You can see I was actually going through the MS build SDKs extras, but we can pull this as a NuGet package. And that's what I'm doing right here is pulling this as a NuGet package. Well, right here, actually, right? So pulling that and then including all of the MS build scripts that are in that. So we pull the NuGet package, which is just MS build scripts. And then we include those. That is pulling in targets for mono Android and Xamarin iOS so that those can build as part of this. But what does this do? So I said, all right, targets build, but what does this do with these, with these targets here? What is actually happening? So let me run this build here. Gonna watch that build. Oh, we did not actually build yet. Let's see if we can fix that. Oh, I've got some other things to show you before we can build this one. Right now though, let's go ahead and peek at our output. 
So I'm gonna just open that up in Explorer here and go into bin, debug. As I told you guys, this is from our, our Xamarin U classes. I just modified a uh, class project. Now look what's in our common projects bin. Our common project did not build a single DLL. So it's not one project equals one DLL anymore. Instead, because I have multiple framework targets, it used the same code base to build one DLL for Xamarin iOS, one DLL for .NET Standard, one for Mono Android. Now in our case, we're only referencing it from Android and iOS. So in our case, the .NET Standard one actually is going to go unused. Now I don't have to do anything special when I reference that. My iOS project is just referencing the common project, it's going to automatically grab the iOS one. Same thing with the Android project. It's going to automatically grab the Android one. Just got a reference to this project, but it'll know what to grab. And then now that I've got these targets in here, that's why going back to what I showed you before with my quote loader, that is why, because it actually is doing multiple compilations. So this isn't really impossible magic. It's doing multiple compilations. And when it does the Android DLL, this code right here is included. When it does the iOS DLL, this code here is included. All right, so we've got that, those different code bases. All right, there's another thing I wanna show you and I had it kind of in a halfway state. That's why we couldn't build just now. Oh, actually notice our IDE is not always real happy with our conditional compilation. So if you wanna make your IDE happy too, notice it thinks that file name doesn't exist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a else clause in here. So everything would build just fine with that. That's not gonna cause us really, um, oh, actually, you know what? It would not build just fine because our .NET standard profile uh, would not have built. So as far as the .NET standard profile goes, that actually was accurate. There was no file name variable defined. Okay, so now this file is nice and clear. The other thing that I've got in this project that is platform specific is my text to speech. So we've got a, a text to speech in iOS and in Android. So I'm going to find that here. Oh, actually I can pull that from my exercise two assets. Again, check out class Xam 250 at Xamarin University as well, where we go over some of this stuff in a different way. Okay, so here I have my, my text to speech for iOS and I'm gonna end up dropping that not into my iOS project and then having to use dependency injection or anything like that, like we normally would in, in Xamarin projects when we have to go from our common project back to platform specific. Instead, I'm going to be dropping it right into my common project here. But first I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. So I'm gonna add a folder, call it platforms. I'm gonna add one called iOS, actually Xamarin iOS 10. All right, we've got that Xamarin iOS 10. Now, let me drag and drop my text-to-speech service iOS into there. All right, now I'm gonna build, or I'm going to try to build, and it's not going to work for the obvious reason, because this text-to-speech iOS, if I open it up, has iOS-specific APIs in it. Okay, the iOS-specific APIs are not going to work when I try to build under the Android profile, as we can see here, or the .NET standard ones, for, the, for that matter. So, all right, under iOS, it is going to work, but if I just right-click and build, it's gonna build all three. Now, if I was using the command line, I could actually instruct it to just build the iOS version, but I'm not working at the command line right now. And in the IDE, all I have the option for is just build. So if I wanna make this work, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more housekeeping here. So we're gonna go back into my CS proj file. By the way, with .NET standard projects here, ones that were created as .NET standard projects, you can just right click and say edit CS proj and not have to unload your project the way you have to do with, with other project types. So this is really cool. It's just inline editable right here. So now I've got it. So what I'm gonna do now, is I don't want to actually include all of this platform by default. And you'll notice in the new style of CS Proj, it makes rational defaults. And a rational default is to include all of the subfolders. So if I don't want to include this, I'm gonna have to actually do that explicitly. So I will delete this. Actually, no, don't delete it. <laughs> that would be bad. Let's exclude from project actually. All right, there we go, exclude from project. Now I've excluded all of the platform subfolders 
I have show all files, so we can still see it. What I'm going to do now is specifically include back the ones that I want. So I'm going to create a new item group here. And in order to specifically include this only when we're building for iOS, I'm going to create a condition. And that condition then is going to have to identify my target framework. So let me try to get this right here. The target framework variable needs to equal. And then it's going to be based on whichever target framework it's building for at the time is here. All right, and like I said, these targets right here are defined in that msbuild.sdk.extrasbuild script. And so that has build scripts specifically for iOS that actually imports all of those iOS specific classes. So that's what's going on there. So, okay, I've included that. I said, well, I've created the item group and the condition for including that. Let's actually say we want to compile things that are in there. So compile, include, and now it will be that platforms path, but then specifically Xamarin iOS 10, and then create our glob here. And that should be everything we need. Uh oh, give it a second. Tell it to ignore all for right now. I might have I might have accidentally hit save before I was done uh, typing the end of that tag. There we go. Now it can save. Now it can reload. Okay. So now I am including text-to-speech service iOS, and under iOS, everything resolves fine. Also, my quote loader knows how to load up iOS quotes, or actually how to save them. So this is all correct. And we're actually loading the, the quotes, by the way, as, as static right there. All right, let's go ahead and run this on iOS and see how that works. By the way, my screen recording software really slows my machine down. <laughs> All right, there we go. That looks good. And everything's loaded up and should work as normal. Looks great. And by the way, if I reach over to my iOS machine, some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them by William Shakespeare. Then we can actually hear it reading because that's the text to speech. Are simple, and many can be expressed in a single word. Freedom, justice, honor, duty, mercy, hope by Winston Churchill. All right, excellent. So doing Android or most other platforms is essentially the exact same process. Don't forget to learn more. Check out that podcast that I mentioned earlier, The Merge Conflict. I think it was episode 85. Check that out. And of course, read Oren Novotny's blog post and go ahead and check out the repo that he has for the build scripts as well. Thanks. I'm Jason Boover. This has been a Xamarin University Lightning Lecture. Bye for now.